Good afternoon, and welcome to the Mid America Regional Council's local officials briefing for Friday, May 8th. Today, we'll take a look at the current situation and what's happened over the past week. I'm Mike Parker, and I'll be presenting on behalf of the Mid America Regional Council. Should you have any questions during the briefing, please add them to the comments section of the video, and we'll do our best to respond in a future briefing. The KC Region COVID-19 Resource Hub is now publicly available at preparemetrokc.org. The Resource Hub is updated daily with the most current information on COVID-19 cases, tests, and deaths as reported by the nine counties in our region in Kansas City, Missouri. We've changed some of the links on our hub, and I've highlighted them on this slide. Uh, number one, you can see partial numbers of those tested. Number two, map layers that are available for that center map. Three, a link to the Healthcare Coalition Northern Southern District's COVID-19 Resource Hub, which shows a similar map for additional Missouri counties in Missouri Highway Patrol Region A. Number four is a link to the KC Regional Hub's Frequently Asked Questions. Uh, number five shows the cases per thousand, and number six shows deaths per thousand. One of our sources for forecasts is the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, the IMHE, at the University of Washington in Seattle. This is the best information available today. The situation can rapidly change. Note that the IMHE launched a major update to their COVID-19 estimation framework. Its focus has shifted from anticipated needs for medical resources to a more direct effect of social distancing policies, how these policies affect reduction in typical mobility, and how all of this could potentially affect COVID-19 infections and deaths. Today, there are 3,578 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the region and 155 deaths. This represents an increase of 1,202 cases and 20 deaths over the last week. The number of people tested in the region rose to 17,649, but numbers are incomplete since not all counties are reporting. This represents an increase of 7,427 people tested over the past week. Here is a picture of the Healthcare Coalition North-South District's COVID-19 Resource Hub, which shows a similar map for additional Missouri counties in the Missouri Highway Patrol Region A. This is a look by jurisdiction of cases and testing. Note the Leavenworth County increase in cases due to cases identified in the Lansing Correctional Facility. That increase brought Leavenworth's cases to 1,100 cases per 100,000, significantly higher than others in the region. Testing results are incomplete since not all are reporting. For those reporting, Clay, Johnson, and Miami are showing less than 10% positive test results whereas Leavenworth has almost 26% positive test results and Wyandotte has 23% positive test results. This slide shows the current situation in Leavenworth County. In May, population accounts for 716 of the 885 cases or 81%. The total prison population, including U.S. Prison, Lansing Correctional Facility, and GEO Reentry Program, is approximately 3,471, which makes up 4.2% of the county's population. The Lansing Correctional Facility is reporting 673 inmate cases. This represents approximately 40% of their population as infected. The Federal Bureau of Prisons, U.S. Prison Leavenworth, is currently reporting no COVID cases inside their facility. The Federal Bureau of Prisons is showing 18 cases at their GEO uh, reentry facility. This is the current situation in Wyandotte County shown by zip code. The smaller numbers next to the zip code represent deaths. The larger numbers are cases. Zip code 66112 includes Riverbend Post-Acute Rehabilitation Facility, which accounts for 132 confirmed cases, or 15% of the county's total. On Tuesday, May 5th, the Multi-Agency Coordination Group met. The members of that group were briefed on the current situation across the region and current hospital capacity. There was discussion of the various reopening plans across the region and some of the challenges for people who live and work in different jurisdictions. A draft matrix of plans was provided. 
It was recognition that what is happening in one jurisdiction can impact another. There was also discussion about the criteria that public health officials outlined previously that should be considered in relaxing stay-at-home orders. All of the conversation was underscored by the fact that this remains a dynamic situation and is subject to change depending on changing situation. Strategies for recovery and reopening continue to evolve and to be refined based on six criteria that have been provided by our public health officials. One, reduction in cases, especially among vulnerable and disadvantaged populations. Two, widespread testing available for all symptomatic individuals, includes access to testing, access to supplies, and adequate staffing to conduct that testing. Three, access to personal protective equipment for frontline workers. Four, healthcare system ability to manage a surge, both in bed capacity and ventilator availability. Five, robust contact tracing capability within public, local public health areas. And six, funding, public health funding for increased staff needs to manage disease surveillance and containment activities as listed above. Strategic objectives. Discussions and future action are guided by these strategic objectives. Save lives, protect the population, cooperate and coordinate, and plan for the longer term recovery in terms of people, economy, infrastructure, and business. All the while maintaining the capability to respond to other events that may threaten lives and property. The status of all seven lifelines throughout the region is green, but some are still hampered by a shortage of personal protective equipment, although conditions have improved. Otherwise, all lifelines are functioning as required with no mission critical shortages of personnel, equipment, or supplies forecast for the next 48 hours. The weather forecasted for the next 48 should not have any impact on our response operations. Now I will provide a brief update on supporting functions and disciplines. ESF-8, Public Health and Medical Services, Reopening Plans. In Missouri, Governor Mike Parson announced the first phase of the Show Me Strong Recovery Plan, outlining how Missouri begins a gradual reopening of economic and social activity beginning on Monday, May 4th. Phase one will extend through May 31st. In Kansas, Governor Laura Kelly lifted the statewide safer at home order on May 4th and issued a statewide executive order to begin phase one of the Ad Astra, a plan to reopen Kansas. This allows Kansas communities to begin phased reopening. Locally, most communities and numerous local jurisdictions have either announced or are working on reopening plans that build on respective statewide guidance. All of the plans take a phased approach, continuing to emphasize social distancing while paying attention to vulnerable populations. Timing of phasing is subject to change based on public health conditions. Testing. The state of Missouri is now providing data to local health departments on the total numbers tested within each jurisdiction. This data will be incorporated into the KC Regional COVID-19 Resource Hub. Contact tracing. Individual health departments are reporting that they have hired more staff for contact tracing. They recognize that even more will be needed to meet the demands over the duration of the event. Public health is exploring options to expand contact tracing to include working with the private sector C19KC group. Their proposal includes a smartphone-based Safe Paths contact tracing app. Hospitals. Multiple hospitals across the metro will resume elective procedures this week. Many will be conducting COVID-19 testing prior to admission. ESF-6, mass care, emergency assistance, temporary housing and human services. Homeless population. Multiple jurisdictions are working with nonprofit organizations to conduct feeding operations. Across the Metro, there are two sites providing shelter to homeless populations impacted by COVID-19 and three more sites on standby should the need arise. Numerous agencies led by Synergy are working on plans to better support homeless youth. 
mass care, feeding. Harvester currently has 40% increase in demand for feeding operations. This increase will continue throughout the foreseeable future. Over 1,400 people received meals from the April 30th food drive at the Old Indian Springs Shopping Center. Harvesters anticipates numbers will double to 2,800 by the May 11th food drive, which starts at 11 a.m. at the Truman Sports Complex. School districts and other community organizations across the metro are providing meals to vulnerable populations. Response and Recovery Fund. The Advisory Committee is working on a third round of grant funding. Donations management. Donations management messaging will be posted to preparemetrokc.org with the donation center hotline and a list of acceptable items. This hotline will be for any individual organization or corporation interested in donating items. Call for information and drop off locations. ESF-7 Resources Support, Personal Protective Equipment, PPE. Federally qualified health centers and long-term care facilities are still reporting shortages of personal protective equipment. FEMA announced that it is providing a 14-day supply of personal protective equipment to nursing homes across the United States. The impact in our region is unclear. The Kansas City Regional Purchasing Cooperative issued bids and awarded eight contracts to provide personal protective equipment for COVID-19 response on an as-needed basis. Enter bid 94 in the search field to view and download contract documents from the online platform. Available items include N95 masks, face shields, gloves, gowns, shoe covers, and disinfectant wipes. The Patel N95 mask decontamination system in Jefferson City is up and running. The Topeka system is coming online. Emergency managers are working with school districts to identify if there are any available personal protective equipment supplies in closed schools. One Clay County School District has offered masks to first responders if needed. Liberty Public Schools donated over 400 masks to Liberty Hospital. ESF 14 Community Recovery. Both states extended the deadlines for utility assistance and low income energy assistance programs. The Missouri Supreme Court and several judicial circuits announced they would suspend or postpone proceedings that include eviction or foreclosure cases until May 15, 2020. ESF 14 met to explore housing assistance to COVID affected populations. ESF 15, Emergency Public Communications. The Regional Association of Public Information Officers, RAPIO, continues to meet to devise and clarify messaging based on the questions they are receiving from the public. They continue to share messages regarding the importance of reopening safety. This concludes my update on supporting functions and disciplines. As a reminder, here's where you can find some more information on the web. In closing, we remind you that we're posting these periodic briefings on the Prepare Metro KC YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the channel and sign up for alerts to receive notification of future briefings. We'll monitor the comments posted to the briefing videos for questions that we can answer in future briefings. Thank you for your attention. This concludes our briefing.